Hello family and welcome to the crippling anxiety meditation conversation. Uh, I've decided you're all family now. There's no point in differentiating between friends and family. Um, we, uh, we talked about faith yesterday and um, a component of faith that I didn't bring up is the idea of something being romantic or not. And I think that we have, we have a lot of ideas about the kinds of things that we have faith in and whether or not those things feel romantic to us. And especially when it comes to um, the buildings of religious observance, if you think about the world's most magnific magnificent mosques or cathedrals or temples, um, they're expensive, they're fancy, and uh, they really do have a, a sense of majesty about them. Um, and that can be really tempting. Um, it can be tempting to think of spaces as being worth your faith because they are kind of romantic and they don't need to be religious i mean you can certainly think of an office space this way so i've uh, seen photos of and heard stories of the pixar offices for example um, that they're almost like a cathedral except a cathedral built to you know <laughs> um, corporate america but anything that exists which has any sort of color to it at all uh, really has the potential for becoming a romantic engagement of our faith so i was using i was using this ridiculous example right of the eyeball rock and i mean it's certainly external and it's certainly it's funny <laughs> it's also ridiculous and and totally pointless. No one would have faith in eyeball rock. Um, but I have another example. So generally, we think of uh, the, the Indian saint um, as Buddh. Um, but I think that most people refer to this guy as Buddha. <laughs> and um, there's a lot of, even just having this in the living room, right? There's a, this is not ours. This is the, the owner of the house. This is their Buddha statue. Um, and I'll try to treat it with respect. This thing, it, it, has a, it has a certain quality to it. I mean, it's a little silly. It has some paint splatters on it. it you're not going to take it seriously as a religious object, but it certainly exists as something external. There's a bit of color to it. Um, it doesn't take much to burn some incense in front of it, and all of a sudden it becomes a sort of altar, um, even if it's not to a figure that um, that you look up to or, or even think much about. And if you have romance on the one side, you really have ordinariness on the other side. And um, I'm looking at my desktop wallpaper right now. And I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm as guilty as anyone of doing this sort of thing, right? My desktop wallpaper is of the inside of a temple and there's a monk meditating in it. Pretty simply, the temple is very dirty and dusty and the rocks are all chipped and it's clearly not expensive. But there is a certain majesty to it. Um, and so there's no way to really escape this romantic. I would describe that background as romantic. It's not simple um, and it's not ordinary. Um, it is creating an idea of meditation. It's creating an idea of monasticism um, in my head every time I look at it. And meditation is valuable. It's most valuable when it is ordinary um, and this is really unappealing to a lot of us um, it's 
nice to have something colorful. It's nice to have something sort of fun. It's nice to have something romantic to look to and um, maybe participate in. And I've certainly, I've engaged in meditation practices with other people before, um, which have this flavor, right? So Zen, for example, is not, it's not particularly romantic, but there's, there's plenty of romance in it. There, there's an incense stick burning usually in the meditation hall. Um, the meditation cushions are a bit more expensive. Uh, there's certain carved wood around. Um, there's usually a Buddha statue. Um, <laughs> Buddha statue. Um, and I think that all of these things are a bit dangerous. They all tend to, uh, to create a certain risk. And that risk is that we'll get distracted from the meditation and we'll start getting attached to these other things. Um, the incense, the tea, the wood, the, the environment. Um, and that serves to distract, but it also serves to cheapen the meditation to some degree. There's a huge risk here in taking a really simple thing that anyone can do at any time, in any place, and making it somehow special, that you have to go to the temple to meditate, that you have to be in a certain posture to meditate, that you have to have a certain incense burning, it has to be a certain time of day. Um, all of this kind of romance um, is, is dangerous. Uh, for a simple meditation practice that is practical for everybody. And um, this is a huge part of the appeal of Anapan for me. Is that there's nothing romantic about it at all. There's nothing romantic about your own breath, first of all. It's always there. Um, and there's nothing really romantic about the, the introduction to it. Right? The instructions are never very complicated. The instructions are certainly not romantic. Um, there's very little color to them. The, the instructions tend to be quite straightforward and simple. Um, and what you end up exploring in this area under your nose is uh, it's a world of pretty boring, ordinary sensation, at least to start with. Um, and by the time it's interesting, by the time there's something colorful, it's not something that anyone else could have given you, right? It's something that you had to discover for yourself, um, that you can zoom in on this space, that you can explore it, um, that there's a lot more going on in that one square inch under your nose than you would have ever thought or believed. Um, and I think that there's a great deal of value in, in that that the, the entry is so simplistic and so basic and so ordinary. And so this is kind of um, another way of looking at that concentric circle diagram I showed a couple days ago of working outside in. Okay, if I'm working from the outside and outside there's, there's yoga and there's music and there's chanting and there's whatever else. And inside, once I get inside, I've done away with visualization and imagination and fantasy and all these sorts of things and I'm just focusing on my body um, it, it's pretty ordinary it's definitely ordinary and what you'll find is that the things which seem special at first um, inside your body that you'll explore in meditation are also just ordinary um, you just have never experienced them before but they're as ordinary as everything else they're as ordinary as um, the sensations under your nose of cold or in the case of today in Jammu, humidity and perspiration, a lot of perspiration. And so um, you'll start by observing those simple things, right? Like just perspiration under the nose. That's it's sweaty and it's greasy and it's uncomfortable, um, but it's real and there's merit in that. I, uh, I will leave you with that idea for today, but I will also put up the link to the um, Anapan uh, 
the app and audio download instructions um, in this YouTube video today. Uh, you can't hurt um, in case anyone hasn't given them a shot. They're only, it's half an hour long. So it's 15 minutes of instruction and it's, sorry, it's 15 minutes of introduction and 10 minutes of instruction and you can take a small break in between. Um, I'd strongly recommend like airplane mode your phone and um, get yourself a quiet space before you actually listen to the introduction and the instruction. Do it all at once in one half hour um, period with like a five or 10 minute break in the middle there um, and uh, see what you feel about it. Um, it is very ordinary <laughs> um, and that's valuable in my opinion. Um, all right, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all healthy. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.